everybody. It's great to see you today. Welcome to Living Power, your online Bible study where we are walking through the Bible in a year. My cat, Cleo, is taking a nap behind me, so she is probably going to be yawning throughout this lesson. But that doesn't mean that the lesson is boring or certainly the reading was not boring. I have something really exciting to show you today about the devil, actually, and what his future is, what he is trying to avoid the very thing that has been written about in Scripture that is his, well, it's been prophesied about him, really, and it's in Isaiah 14, and I'm going to close us out today reading um, and describing a little bit of that from Isaiah 14. The reading today, we were in 2 Kings, we were in Isaiah. Isn't it interesting that Isaiah the prophet was writing about events that were also in the book of 2 Kings? So it's kind of neat to read the Bible chronologically because you get to see how everything kind of pieces together. This was about Babylon, the Babylonian invasion, and God is saying... I am calling this army for this task. I am using them to do my will. And when I read when I read things like that in Isaiah 13 verse 4, the Lord of heaven's armies has called this army together. They come from distant countries, from beyond the farthest horizons. They are the Lord's weapons to carry out his anger and with them he will destroy the whole land. The day of the Lord has arrived. Even though this is talking about terror and an invasion and war, it still gives me hope. Can it give you hope too to see that the Lord is in heaven and he is orchestrating like pieces on a chess game. He is orchestrating the army coming in and Babylon coming in at this time and he is sovereign and you can just see his sovereignty all throughout just woven throughout the verses in Isaiah and that that I like now the day of the Lord that is described here in Isaiah 13 is little d uh, lowercase d it's describing the events that happened when Babylon invaded. We're speaking around 586, 587 B.C. The capital D, Day of the Lord, is a future time spoken of in the tribulation. It will be at the, uh, the end of the tribulation period, which is considered the great day of the Lord. Both of them have similarities in that they're both times of God's judgment. God is saying, I have had enough and it's time for me to come in and do something about what's been going on. And Isaiah 13, 6 says, the day of the Lord has arrived. <clears throat> you know, Babylon from the beginning, even back in Genesis 11, verses 1 through 9, has been characterized as a city that has been rebellious against God. Over the centuries, it has been a place of hatred against the God of Israel. We are going to see that continue up to the very end, and it will be true also in the tribulation. Babylon and the message about Babylon in the reading today is like the tribulation period, which will be right before Jesus comes again for his second coming. It will be a period, both, both of them, periods of great distress, God is angry. He is punishing evil. He is bringing on his judgment. <clears throat> Many will die in the battle, and the army that's coming in has absolutely no mercy, and the people that are attacked will be powerless, powerless to do anything about it. <clears throat> in verse 19, Babylon, the city, was destroyed, but not the entire empire, and the city will be rebuilt but it will be destroyed by God at a final time. Okay, so let's go now to Isaiah 14. And I want to show you, this is speaking of a taunt for Babylon's king. And what this is referring to is the devil. Isaiah 14, verse 1. It says, he's speaking of a time in the millennium when 
It says the Lord will have mercy on the descendants of Jacob. He will choose Israel as his special people once again. Israel will be a, an extremely prominent, favored, blessed nation in the millennium. All the nations will know that the King of Kings comes from Israel and that Israel is beloved by God. People will come from every nation and bring Israel their treasures. And it says he will bring them back to settle once again in their own land. This, of course, is speaking of Jesus when he comes again. And he will call people from all of the 12 tribes which have resettled all over different nations to come back and to live in Israel in the borders that were established back in Genesis when God told Abraham the, the ge geography of the land that he was giving to them. The nations of the world, verse 2, will help the Lord's people to return, and those who come to live in their land will serve them. This, this is the condition of the world. They will uh, encourage this, and they will assist the people returning home. Now, verse 3, it says, In that wonderful day when the Lord gives his people rest from sorrow and fear, from slavery and chains, this, of course, is the millennial reign, you will taunt the king of Babylon. This is speaking of the devil. And the devil, you see, will be cast into this place at the, at the end of the Battle of Armageddon, which is what I'm looking up because I'm thinking of when Jesus comes, he will come on clouds, and he will return to save his people from annihilation. At that moment, he will defeat the armies coming against Israel, and he will throw the devil into Sheol. Now, wouldn't, wouldn't you want to be a fly on the wall? Well, maybe not. You don't have to be to understand what's going to happen. When he goes and he is, is thrown there by Jesus, when you read Isaiah 14, verse 4, the mighty man has been destroyed, your insolence is ended. This is speaking of the devil. When Jesus casts him out, casts him away from this world, he will actually be humiliated before all of the people that are there, the souls that are there in Sheol, and he will be mocked and scorned himself. You know, he'd been the leader of mockery, the, the father of lies for all of these centuries, and now he is getting his comeuppance, if you will. The Lord has crushed your wicked power and broken your evil rule, in verse 5. You struck the people with endless blows of rage and held the nations in your angry grip, but finally the earth is at rest and quiet. Now it can sing again. This is a time in the millennium where there is no devil roaming the earth inciting his, his um, hell's angels to, to do evil things on the earth. This is what we have to look forward to in the millennial reign of, of Christ. Nine, in the place of the dead, this is Sheol where he has been cast down, there is excitement upon your arrival. Think about it, murmurs and, oh, oh the, 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 the ruler supposedly the strong ruler has been cast down and there is someone stronger than he. Well, yes, Jesus, and he has done this thing. The spirits of world leaders, I'm in verse 9, and mighty kings long dead stand up to see you. This is what will happen. They're in Sheol. They're, they're in a place of, of waiting because they... Um, the devil has them, has them captured there, and they are standing up to see the devil as he's being cast there. With one voice, they all cry out. Now you are as weak as we are, verse 10. You want to be a fly on the wall? Well, here we can see exactly what's happening. Your might and power were buried with you. The sound of the harp in your palace has ceased. Now maggots are your sheet and worms your blanket. How you are fallen from heaven, O shining star, son of the morning. This is what Lucifer was called. That was the devil's name before he fell from heaven. And the reason he fell originally from heaven is because of pride, because he wanted to be like God. And here in verse 13, we see originally, now the verses are jumping back long, long time ago when Lucifer was Lucifer, 
and he was the head worship leader in all of heaven. All kinds of angels reported up to him because he was at the throne of God. God had made him so incredibly beautiful and wonderful to, to see and to hear, but he had pride in himself, and Lucifer became Satan when he fell. This is what Lucifer said, verse 13, I will ascend to heaven. And I will set my throne above God's stars. I will preside on the mountains of the gods. I will climb to the highest heavens, and I will be like the Most High. This is where he set himself up to be God. And this is a description, the four things. He will challenge God. He wants to rule over the angels. He wanted to take over heaven, and he wanted to be God. This is when he was cast out of heaven, and he took a third of the angels with him, which ended up being the devil's angels. You know, there is no salvation to the angels. Once they fall, they are, they're fallen forever. And this is one of the things that Paul tells us that they marvel about, because salvation isn't offered to them, and they're curious about it. And salvation is only offered to the humans, to you and to me. So praise the Lord that he has offered us his salvation so that we can reign and rule with him in the millennial period. We, we get to look forward to a time of peace where there is no devil and it, it will just be beyond our wildest imaginations because the world will be such a different place. Over the coming weeks, we're going to talk a little bit more about the millennial period and what all happens and what it will be like. And I hope you will continue to stay with me through this Bible study because we're going to get um, into some really great details as the year goes on. Well, I pray this has been a blessing to you. Um, I pray that you will come back again tomorrow as we continue tomorrow in this wonderful book of Isaiah. Blessings to you. Shalom.